health issue of water, right? So we think, well, of course, if I go to Africa or if I travel somewhere and I see some nasty pond that I can't drink that. But in our own homes, in our own communities, and we're seeing more and more of this all the time. Other than in Utah, where we have these beautiful mountains and supposedly all the water comes running down there, and yet all the time we have communities getting notices saying, warning, you know, it is not safe to drink the water in your, in your taps, coming out of your taps. In fact, I think Riley was telling me one time you can light a fire on his or something like that. It's like flammable. <laughs> so, you know, you think about this with your water and you think, well, for years we thought this was okay. But the domestic issue is just as concerning because as we become educated, we need to learn that there are other things around us that we weren't even aware of right. that are going on behind the scenes. And as we become more educated, we have more power. Yes. We have more opportunity to change and make this world a better place and be responsible and great stewards when it comes to water. Yep. So this next individual uh, had the opportunity to go out and visit him. He just bought a, a place out in the mountains, and it's a beautiful place. And, and uh, you know, as I saw the streams and things running through it, and they're trying to get their water running in their home, they're remodeling and different things. I had this thought about, here we are coming to San Diego to talk about beautiful water. And yet, years ago, we would think, oh, there's a beautiful stream right here. I can just dip right in there and, and take a drink. And I remember as a young man, we used to. And nowadays, everybody would tell you, absolutely not. That is not safe anymore because of these things. Right. But he has educated himself. He has uh, oh, yes. been a great steward to all of us in learning about water. Those of you that, how many were able to go to the VIP training last night? A bunch of you were able to go to that training last night? But he educated you on this very thing. So we're gonna bring him out today so you can be educated on why water from a domestic standpoint is just as concerning to you and I and our future as anything there is in our lives. In fact, probably one of the most important things is going to be one of the most important trends as we move forward. So when you're looking for opportunity, you also want to look for trends. And I want to just give you that little tip today as you're taking notes, think about, I want to be, I want to be part of a huge and growing trend as this man has always taught us. So I'd like to introduce none other than Mr. Tim Sellers. Yeah! something that occurs, an epiphany moment, if you will, and I had mine, and mine occurred on that day, not the day the picture was taken, but the day that I found out that my wife is pregnant, because right at that moment, dad begins to go, wow, and he begins to think, and if you're really, if you're really honest with yourself, there's a moment right then and there where you begin to think about uh, bad experiences or uh, people less fortunate and things like that where there's birth defects and you wonder right at that moment do you have anything to do with it? Is it a curse from God or is it that you can cause it? Can you cause birth defects? And I don't think there would be anything in the world that would be more scary to a parent than to think, you mean I fed mama that, and it caused that? And so, the last person you would ever want as a husband is me. Because <laughs> everything that my wife put in her mouth, I would go research. And I would come back and say, uh-uh, honey, you can't have that anymore. <laughs> and she would say, but it's just Twizzlers, or it's just whatever. And then there was a day I saw her drinking water. And I thought, nah, that's fine, I'm sure. It's clear. It tastes all right. However, it wasn't the case. And so I'm going to take you backwards to my journey through this process. First thing I want to do is you, that you've got to understand how gorgeous and how genius the entire water cycle is. In other words, it makes itself. Like, how cool is that? That's really cool. Right? Like, what, what about <laughs> You guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I just got an apple 
apple comes with a seed that makes an apple? Right. Yeah. What's that? Right? Water comes with a process that it makes itself. Yeah. Okay, so do you see that down there where it's uh, right in the center and the lower part where it's surface water? That surface water, because the sun heats it up, it creates moisture and rises. While it rises, the wind blows and it turns into clouds and it forms over different areas and then it rains down. Alright, so if it rains down and it soaks into the ground, it goes lower and lower and lower into the very bottom part down there called an aquifer. Alright? Or it runs across the grass and into a river or stream where it yet again turns into clouds and rains again. That's a gorgeous cycle. However, if you take that little farm over on the right hand side and they say, you know what, there's bugs here and so we need to get rid of the bugs. And so they pour pesticides on it. Now something that I found out is that the only time bugs come around is when the soil is unhealthy. And so instead of taking the time to nurture the soil and make the soil right, they want to kill the bugs. But the bugs are there to get rid of the soil. Isn't that odd? Okay, so we pour pesticides on it and then it rains. And now the rain washes that into the water. Alright, now you see where the problem is. And then when you advance that problem, where you have up in the upper left hand side, you have urban areas. Such as Los Angeles, San Diego, things like that. What you've got there is a whole lot of people who are doing their business and it ends up in water. That's a nice way to say what I just said. Um, you have the mining industry, right? And the mining industry is where they extract out various different types of metals. They extract out different things that we need as, as raw uh, resources. And so, in that process, sometimes they use really, really toxic chemicals in order to extract, let's say, gold out of a, a pile of uh, rock or something. And so, what do they do with that when they're done with it? They dump it. Okay, you get this picture now? Yeah. All right, so, one by one, I'm sitting there going through a contaminant. So, I will find a contaminant in water. And I will say, where did that come from? And almost all of the bacteria that I found, the source of bacteria is feces. Perfect. Everybody know what feces is? It's poop. And it said animal and human feces. What? What, what was that? Human. How does the human feces get in there? That doesn't make any sense to me. All right. And now it does make a lot of sense to me. So here's what I finally got to. And this is, uh, those that were there last night know I just skipped an enormous amount, which is every single one of those items that I would list. Here's what it looks like. Here's where it comes from. And here's what it does to the human body. All right, and so this thing is probably about 30 pages long that I would take item by item and find out where it came from and how in the world did it get in water. And here's the final epiphany. <coughs> Everything that industry makes, and that little thing at the very top is industry. Everything that industry makes for, look at the left-hand side of the screen, for the home. And that means the clock that's in your windows. That means the deck that you don't want to change every seven or eight years. And so you buy treated lumber. Do you know that uh, there's enough arsenic in a, in a treated two by six board that you use on a deck to kill 13 people? Isn't that fun? Like, why do we want boards to last forever if it kills our kids? And us. Okay, so everything that goes into the home. And then to the right of that is everything that goes to the workplace. And then next to that is everything that goes to hospitals. 
and leaves hospitals. And then everything that goes to agriculture, big agriculture and small agriculture, everything that is directly dumped into the soil and everything that is directly dumped into water and everything that is burned that ends up in the atmosphere and then when, see all those raindrops at the top? That shows every bit of that ends up in either a landfill, which goes down to the aquifer, or into surface water. Walk through Home Depot. Just look around. Every single bit of that ends up in your drinking water. And so I have this new view now. It doesn't matter what store I go into. As I walk down the aisles, I say, I'm drinking that, I'm drinking that, I'm drinking that, I'm drinking that, I'm drinking that. I'm drinking that. And when you turn the aisle in the dish soap, or the laundry soap, and, it, and your eyes start burning, just think, I'm drinking that. I'm drinking that. The camera crew is going to kill me. I want you to read with me. Okay? Um, I can't go there. Um, you guys read that one along with me. Whatever garbage we put into soil, landfill, or air gets in the water because of rain and snow. Think about what's going into our soils, our garbage, batteries, plastics, metals, glass, light bulbs, etc. Water from our showers, skin products, hair products, cleaning products, our toilet flushings, which is the summation of everything a person consumes, including drugs and toilet cleaning products, not that they consume that. And there's more. Every piece of furniture made, appliance, teddy bears, record albums, CDs, dyed fabrics, fire retardants, wood preservatives on building exteriors, concrete, asphalt, sealants, cars and car parts, auto exhaust, decaying airplanes and scrap metal, carpet dye and glue, electronic, glass and mirrors, wires, pipes, paint and insulation, every hazardous waste product from a hospital, expired drugs and disinfectants, all pesticides, insecticides, herbicides and fertilizers from agriculture and your neighbors. All industrial spills and dumpings of oils, chemicals, and nuclear waste. All chemical weapons used in World War I and II. All residential and commercial real estate structures ever built that are now, quote, gone. Exactly where is gone? It's in those two faucets at the bottom of Earth. And it doesn't matter if you put it in a water bottle or you put it in a glass from the tap. It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. People have this delusion that if you get water bottle from Avian and it has this gorgeous mountain on it, that it's different. <laughs> you cannot escape it. Yep. So the question is, is does it harm you? There's a real disease in America. And the disease is, is I'm walking around just fine, nothing wrong with me. Yeah. Right? I'll explain that problem. Um... If you were to look at uh, the moment of conception, you have one egg, if you will. And then it divides after about four hours, and it's two cells. And then those two divide, and it's four. And then 16. And Fred Cooper can do the rest of that math. <laughs> <laughs> Until the person, the little baby is born, and there's about five trillion cells. And so the human body is made up of nothing but cells. So those gorgeous eyes, when you look at them, they're just cells. The lips, they're cells. The fingernails, they're, they're nail cells. The skin is skin cells. The bone is bone cells. Got the picture? Yes. And so therefore, anything at all that can harm a cell can harm you. And so if you were to take a cell and you were to drop something on it, and you say, well, this killed the cell, then it can kill you. The, the disease in America is, is that you think that you have to be shot in the head to say, oh, that kills you. Because you can trace the bullet back to the gun to the person that pulled the trigger, right? If you use a laundry soap or fabric softener or a bleach, and you look at the back and it says harmful if swallowed. And when you hear your washing machine switch cycles and go to spin, just before that, you hear this. <laughs> what is that? That's the water going down the drain. And where does that go? Into your drinking water. 
That is your drinking water. Now, it may take this long route. It'll go through those 100-year-old pipes that you heard Mr. Gregory say. It'll go through those 100-year-old pipes with a whole lot of biofilm in there. And then it'll route itself in. It gets hit with chlorine and then comes back into your drinking water. What? <laughs> All right, so the U.S. Geological Survey says that 97% of streams and 58% of groundwater contains pesticides. Environmental Worker Group said 315 contaminants have been found in U.S. tap water, including lead, chromium-6, pesticides, and rocket fuel. Environmental Protection Agency. Lead in drinking water contributes to 480,000 cases of learning disorders in children. So suddenly birth defects doesn't necessarily mean that it happens at the point of birth. Now all of a sudden you start to realize that that lead that was in the drinking water that mama had could contribute to learning disorders some four or five years later. This company, and I'm not sure, maybe somebody from Japan can pronounce this for me. Is it Chiso or Siso? Chiso. What? Chiso. 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 Neither one that I Chiso. 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 Okay. They dumped mercury into the ocean for 36 years. About five years after they started, the babies that were living in the area started coming out like that. So an acute dose of something is, a, is way too much and it overwhelms and kills the body in a very short period of time. That's an acute dose. So think of uh, a party night. You go out and you party really, really hard and you drink way too much and it kills you. That's an acute dose of alcohol. Now think of the person who drinks frequently and so that would be chronic doses. It's still a toxin. If a toxin can kill a cell, it can kill you. The only question is, how long does it take? And so you're consuming that alcohol over time, and pretty soon your liver can't keep up, and you end up with liver disease. Do you see where that problem sits and how the difference between an acute dose and a, and a chronic uh, mini doses over a long period of time happen? Yes. And so if that's going on in our drinking water, now let me tell you how science goes about figuring out the lethal dose. LD stands for lethal dose. LD1 represents one person out of a hundred, how many of them die? So we give them a little bit of mercury, and out of 100, only one die. That's called an LD1. An LD1 of mercury combined with an LD1 of lead will kill all hundred. And so when they do these LD tests, and you're drinking that your test, when you're drinking the water and it's got mercury in it and lead in it, you stand risk at not only a chronic consumption of it that's harming you. And so at the end of it, if, if you ever question why there's Parkinson's and dementia type diseases out there, right? Well, if you look at those kids, and then you look at the people who are in the last stages of Parkinson's or any of those diseases, you'll see a very similar view. So, you think, but my water company purifies it. What do they purify it with? Chlorine. Chlorine. The stuff that says on the back of the bleach bottle, harmful if swallowed. Yeah, that stuff. So that's what they do. Now... Uh, it's strongly linked to heart disease, particularly it causes the scarring inside the artery walls. That's the beginning stage of arteriosclerosis. But more than that, no, not more than that. More urgent or more present is when it kills all the good bacteria in the body. If you were to um, do number two, and then you were to look at it, there's one third of the dry weight of that is the good bacteria in your body. And so you need that stuff for your immune system. And so you don't want to be killing that. And so a lot of people say, well, I don't, need, I don't drink that kind of water. I drink bottled water. Well, 40% of it is just tap water. 40%. Little or no regulation. If you think that the government has your back or the EPA has your back or the FDA has your back, not really. Because if 
you sell it inside a state. So let's say California. And if you just sell it inside the state, so you can take it all the way to San Francisco and you can take it down to Chula Vista, all right? There is no regulation, none. Literally, you could go into your bathtub, fill up water jugs, put a nice ice glacier on the outside of it. No, it's going to get graphic designer. And then go out and sell it as purified water or pure water or healthy water or all natural water. In other words, you can put anything you want on it. No regulation. But if you go over to Arizona, you're subject to regulation, but there are no reporting requirements. The FDA doesn't require you to submit anything. So it's literally at your own risk, all right? PET, that is a acronym, comes from the small bottles. Okay, so the smaller bottles that you can go <laughs> real easy with, that is something called a phthalate that is in it. I'll explain that in a second. BPA are those big jugs that they carry on the shoulder like Culligan and things like that and they put it on there in office buildings and then you drink the water there. BPA comes from that. I want to really uh, rapidly run through this one because it's so significant. This is the endocrine system and the endocrine system basically controls your body. And so it's pretty much male and female are exactly the same until you get down to the very bottom. And, uh, but these particular glands here, they control the body. 100%. So have you ever heard a woman say, my hormones are going wild? Well, who sent the hormone? Each one of those glands send a hormone. A hormone is nothing more than a communication. But the real key that you need to understand is, is it is a chemical right. communication. Yep. Yeah. If it were not a chemical, then these bad things that are in bottled water couldn't hijack them. Okay, these are chemicals in bottled water and it's a chemical message that goes down, and that's the problem. Let me show you this. First, let me show you, share with you what each one of those kind of does so that you can have a picture how it controls the body. The penile gland sends a hormone to the cells of your body that, that tell you to go to sleep. Melatonin is not it. In other words, you don't go take melatonin because you can't sleep. In other words, something hijacked your, uh, your sleeping message, right? The pituitary gland sends a hormone to your cells telling them to grow, to respond, to produce milk, to ovulate, to regulate male testosterone. The thyroid sends a chemical communication to control your metabolism. My metabolism is too slow, right? What could be going on? The adrenal gland affects how your body uses sugar, balances salt, grows hair, muscle, and bone. The pancreas also regulates sugar with the insulin hormone. Ovary gland sends chemical messages concerning pregnancy and muscle relaxation. And then the male body has a unique one here, and that is, is that it builds muscle mass. Okay, so uh, um, as, uh, as you become older and frail and things like that, you need to make sure that all is good going on down there. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let me show you how this works. Do you see those, uh, those red things? That's a cell. And uh, the human body has around 10 trillion cells in it. And those... Um, glands communicate with those cells billions of times a second. And so, you see those little orange things? Those are exact hormones that are going. They run through the system, if you're hydrated. They run through the system, and then they come along, and these little receptors, the red ones, are sitting there hanging out waiting. They're waiting, they're waiting. Oh, that was mine. Boom! And it catches it. It turns to the cell, and then the cell carries out that function. Puts you to sleep, causes milk to happen in a uh, pregnant woman, causes various different things to occur. Yep. You got the picture of how that works optimally. Yes. Well, a water bottle has a chemical thing that looks just like the real hormone, but it's not. And so it hijacks your system. And so those green ones are the bad guys. Those are the toxins. And they call them xenoestrogen, or they call them... Uh, Endocrine mimickers, hormone mimickers, endocrine disruption. That's exactly how it occurs. Bottled water from the Environmental Workers Group. We found chemical contamination in all bottled waters tested. They contain disinfection byproducts, fertilizer residue, and pain medication. Please memorize this slide. This guy right here named Sal, Dr. Sal, 
He has done a lot of research on this. Plastic chemicals are linked to obesity, prostate cancer, brain disorders such as ADHD, liver disease, ovarian disease, diseases of the uterus, and low sperm count in men. All right, that's from plastic bottles. <laughs> Study on China factor workers found that exposure to bisphenol A, which is BPA, was linked to four times increase in impotency. Man up, <laughs> drop the ball. BPA triggers the release of almost double the insulin. All right, that's what causes a man to put fat on right here. You double the insulin, actually needed to break down food. High insulin levels can desensitize the body to the hormone over time which in some people may lead to weight gain and type 2 diabetes. And here is why I do this. Okay? This is why it's a crusade to me. I'm not a marketing guy. I'm a crusade guy. You see that, that big dot on the left? Blue dot? That blue dot represents all the water on the planet. Okay? The little dot to the right of that represents all the fresh water. That would be all the water that's in the atmosphere. That would be all the water that's in all plants. That would be all the water that is in animals and in your body. That also represents all the water that is stored in aquifers that we can't get to or glaciers that we can't get to. And that little tiny dot in Atlanta, see that little tiny one? Yeah. That represents the actual amount of water that we have. The dinosaurs had that same grip of water. When the system was set up, it was not set up knowing that we were going to be dumping contaminated chemicals into it. The bacteria, it gets handled in the evaporation process. The viruses get handled in the evaporation process. But the chemicals do not. That's a new problem that we have. If you are younger than 20 years old, your parents did this to you. If you are older than 20 years old, you contributed to this problem. Whether it is that you went out and you bought a bottle of water. You donated money and gave those water companies power. In other words, you donated. You said, I like what you're doing, keep doing it. Or you bought a contaminant and you poured it down your drain somewhere. Like you want to clean your, 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 your pipes with Drano. Great idea. And where does it, when it does unclog, where does it go? In other words, all of us donated to this. If you are aware enough to be able to understand what I just shared with you, if you're that aware, you're the only people who can save it. Whoever you have given the responsibility to and said, you've got it, then you need to relook at whether or not they're doing their job or not. Evidently and obviously they have not done their job because we have this problem. But what better group of people than the people sitting in this room whose mission is to unleash the human